Hello everybody, this is Taps from Taps Codes here, and today we're taking a look at Jump Team 2 from the Top Interview 150. Uh, so let's go read over what the problems you got to offer. We're given a zero index array of integers num sorry, zero index array of integers nums of length n. We're initially positioned at nums zero. Each element in nums i represents the maximum length of a forward jump from index i. In other words, you are at nums i, you can jump to any nums i plus j, where j is less than or equal to nums i. Return the minimum number of jumps <laughs> needed to reach nums n minus 1. The test cases are generated such that you can reach nums n minus 1. So funnily enough, uh, yesterday when we had jump game 1, we kind of solved most of this, so I'm actually going to go take my code directly from there. Which means I'll have to hold off of GitHub, because I don't think they store it locally for you unless you pay money. Here we go. So if you want a better explanation of what's happening here, uh, go watch that video. Anyway. So instead of returning true here, when the length is less than 1, uh, we just we just want to turn zero because no jumps are needed, and then yeah. So basically, the the way our old uh, algorithm work, which I guess I can try to explain on Paint Net, is pretty straightforward. I mean, like like I said, we're copying over the code. We just have to make a few changes to this code, and and it's pretty much already ideal. Uh, so what we have going on here is when we start off, right, we check if the length is less than one. That's an edge case type thing. Then what we do is we set our goal. So let's say we have our example here, right? Two, three, one, one, four. Two, three, one, one, four. Right. What we first do is we do our check, you know, uh, is it less than one? In which case, I guess I could just do less than equal one. Because if, if there's only one element, even if the, the jump number is zero, it shouldn't take any jumps. So I'll do, I'll do less than equal. Um, I'll just do return one. Because that means it takes one jump. Uh, and then anyway, from there, uh, we set our current position in the array. Right, so in our case, we start from zero. And then we set the leaps to the amount of leaps we can do from that spot in the array. So nums of zero, uh, which is equal to two in our case here, right? Then we get a remainder, which is the amount left over in the array, right? So this would be a total of five minus one, because that's what you do to get the index that you need to reach. And we have our index of four, which is, it happens to be the number four, but it's the fourth in, uh, index in our array, and the final place that we need to reach, so now we have our goal, right? Then uh, we do an initial check right here, right, if leaps uh, greater than or equal to remainder, we're going to basically check, does our first leap right here, let's say our leap here was six, and on, on a five long array, then you could just do one leap and make it all the way to the end, and instead of returning true, we're now going to return 1, because that means you need one leap, the first initial leap, to go make it all the way to the end. Right. And I guess this would be no jumps at the top here. Instead of a one jump, it'd be zero. Because if you just have one item, you're already there. And if you have zero items, you're not jumping at all anyway. So it's actually zero instead of one there. Uh, anyway, then we go to the main logic, where basically we see we have our value of 2 here. We set current leap and max leap to zero. Uh, and those are two variables that help us keep track of some important info. And then we have a loop right here for i in range 1 to leaps plus 1. And there, notice there's a while loop that ends uh, if leaps is zero. So while loops is greater than zero. Meaning we can always start from 1 because we always know that 1 is an option for us. Because uh, there's at least one leap left. And what we do is we take this number two, right, the amount of leaps left, and we use that in our loop here to check the next two variables. And what we do is we do i plus the value there, right, so in this case i plus three, 
And then, then after that, it would be i plus 1, with i being like the number in the loop. So the first time, instead of i, it's just 1. The second time, instead of i, it's just 2. And by combining the two, we can see which of them would bring us further along in the array. Right, so this 4 is bigger than 3. Despite the leap being bigger, the initial leap of 2 being bigger, the overall distance that this will give us is way higher. Right, so we would pick this 4 right here with a single leap going forward. Uh, and that's kind of what's going on here. Then we check if we can leap directly to the end. So now we need to add another kind of variable, which is the amount of times that we've leaped. Right, so uh, I'll just do. I don't know, total leaps. Because we already have a variable called leaps, it'd be kind of weird to uh, overwrite that. And then for every step of this while loop, we're going to increment total leaps. Right, so total leaps plus equals one, just right at the top here. And the reason we're doing it here is because we start at zero. And the first time we get into this while loop, we already effectively are doing one leap. And then by the time we run through this again, we'll be doing a second leap. I think that makes sense. Uh, and then instead of returning true, we can just return total leaps plus one. Because we'd have to do one more leap. Because right, what this checks is if we move to that maximum. right? So if we make the move, if we do that one long jump to three, will that eventually just bring us directly to our end goal? right? So our end goal here is four. So let's say we are starting at zero, right? And we do a one leap, and we have three available after the fact. That will bring us to four. So that would end off uh, our, our experiment right here. And the reason we do it here is that we don't have to do one extra iteration. This actually saves us one whole loop uh, through our array. Because we just know, I mean, look, if you can max jump three, you might as well just account for it when you're doing this check. It doesn't cost a lot of extra compute power, and it does save you an entire iteration, which could be a lot more compute power. All right, so we do that check right there. Because the thing is, if uh, if this was possible, we would have caught it up here, right? This is if the initial leap works. So off the initial loop, this is a good check because it basically checks one loop into the future. And off of every loop after the fact because we already checked one into the future basically the the thing we're trying to do now uh it's just it's just perpetually checking one loop ahead uh so we, we basically just skip the uh it's kind of like how we start this this for loop from one this almost like starts from one because we basically do the zero here uh and then after that we update our position with how far we leaped right so in this case Right, when we go zero and we leap one, our new position is one. We don't add the three. That's the important part. Like we have the the ability to know that three is going to be the next set of leaps. And right here, you can see if max leap is greater than uh, should be greater than hmm. uh yeah, I think we do if max leap is greater than cur leap. I had it greater than zero. I think this this uh, check wasn't really doing anything, but now it's kind of important that we're doing something. Uh, so we do if max leap is greater than current leap, basically meaning if our uh, leap forward is not zero, right? Because if it is zero, we don't want it. We want to end off, right? It basically, this is saying if we jumped to a zero and it wasn't the end, because at this point we know it wasn't the end if we if we make that leap possible. So if we jump to zero and it's not the end, uh, then set leaps to zero, which will end this while loop right here. And with the if statement uh, right here, basically all that happens is we update the leaps. So right here it was set to two because our next thing was going to be three. We now set it to three. And then we run through the same logic, right? We look three ahead, right? We would check i plus one, i plus one and i plus four, with i being kind of each step in the loop, right? So one, two, and three. And obviously three plus four is seven, and that's way bigger than what either of those would give us. So we would have picked that going forward and kind of at the end of the day, gotten our solution. Uh, and then the, uh, it says the test cases are generated such that you can reach nums of n minus one. So I'm just gonna keep this as like a random, random thing at zero, basically 
that this should never be reached. Uh, but if we're returning zero and we shouldn't be, it's safer to assume it's down here. We could even return minus one. That actually would be a better idea. Uh, and, and it's because you don't want this to return, right? Because if we return zero, well, maybe it's hitting this thing when it's not supposed to. If we return one, maybe it's hitting this thing that's not supposed to. If we're hitting anything past one, maybe it's returning this thing when it's not supposed to. But if we're returning minus one, it only happens if we reach the bottom here, which shouldn't be happening, which would mean we have faulty logic. Yeah, let's go run it. I think we've adapted our... Uh, yeah, we adapted it perfectly. You can see two leaps and two leaps. Perfect. And let's hit submit and go see if we're good. But this is a very important thing uh, when you're doing leak code. Repurposing your code is amazing. You can see, despite this exact code, like like almost word for word, we changed three lines just to change it from true false to the amount of leaps. Uh, despite this code being like the bottom 20% on that that specific simulation, the code now meets 95% of users in this simulation because there's no, uh, well, there's not no, because clearly there's 5% better. But there's not many, like, cheesy workarounds. Uh, the memory usage is pretty bad because I definitely have more variables than I need. Uh, last time I looked at the optimal solutions, I'd realized, like, oh, they, they don't use all these variables. They just are smarter about it and check these variables, like, in if statements and stuff, like, mathematically. Uh, so they have a better way of doing that. But overall, this was still very, very solid. I mean, memory usage isn't too, too important. I mean, obviously, it's better to get it better. But the runtime is mainly what you're here for, and our runtime here is amazing. So that's really good. Uh, let's go over to the optimal solutions now to kind of check out on what we maybe missed out on. Okay, intuitive solution beat 99%. Let's see. So they, they do the same thing, position of zero, right? So that's cur here. They do steps of zero, so that's our total leaps. And then they do while position is less than the length of nums minus one. All right, so that's that's basically our, our uh, while leaps is greater than zero, I guess. This is basically saying while well, we're not at the end, and this is important. They they do this optimization. You might be wondering, like, well, why why are they able to do this? What what makes them have this ability? And it's because they specify the problem statement itself specifies uh, the test cases are generated such that you can always reach nums n minus one, meaning you will be able to reach the goal. So instead of having my code over here, which was adopted from yesterday, uh, just for the sake of saving time. Right. My code here checks for everything, including not having any jumps available and, and kind of stuff like that uh, and not reaching the goal because that was a possibility last time. So I could have I could have sat here longer uh, and made this even better by getting rid of those checks. Right. Um, like like this here and this here, they're both not necessary. The zero and the one returns here completely unnecessary because you can always reach the goal now. So there's no need for edge cases, right? By having that knowledge, you know you, you you can just ignore that, and that's exactly what they do here. So they just do a while loop, right? While the position hasn't reached the goal yet, uh, increment the step by one in the same way that we increment the step at the start of our loop, right? It's the same kind of logic. This is just a more efficient way of of coding it uh, with some optimizations. And right, then we set the position to self dot next position, which is this function they designed down here where they pass in the array in our current position and then they return once they're done with that so this is what they're running in their loop uh, it's, it's it's i don't know why they even bothered defining a function i guess it was for clarity but you could have easily just written this code into here without defining an extra function because it's really not that much anyway uh what they do is next position is equal to n where did n get passed in from? Oh, next position is equal to our current position, right? Because we have nums list and then n int. n int is this, nums list is that. All right, so next position is equal to the position. Uh, barest position. I don't... How do you spell that? Is that even a word? I think that'd be furthest position, but either way, it, it gets the point across. Uh, so that's fine. But the furthest position is n plus nums n which would be our uh, 
our current position plus the leap we can make from our current position, right? So in our case, I was storing that value as leaps here, and that's what we loop through in this for loop. Uh, and then he returns if the furthest position has reached the end, right? So this is the check we had here, except we were checking one in the future. He's just checking currently. Basically, if you've, if you've reached the end, return uh, that we're at the end. Right, so so in, the, in this case, for his purposes, he has to return that the position is past the end. Right, So he sets the position to length of nums minus one. That makes sense. Uh, otherwise, he does a loop starting from one, ending with the leaps plus one. Right, So in my case, I have that tied to a variable leaps, but he got rid of that. And he's just doing it just directly, which is way better always. If you can avoid using variables, it's nicer. Uh, the reason I use variables and the reason you should maybe consider using them yourself sometimes is for code readability. Uh, but in the case of something like this, where it's used like twice, you, you don't really need it. Uh, the other part when you want to use variables is if you use a value a lot, right? So let's say I know the amount of leaps is five for the next 20 steps. Then I could just store leap equal to five and then just type in leap every time so I don't have to remember that it's five or I don't have to remember now, if I look at the code and I see a five consistently, I'm like, why is that there? Instead, you'll just be like, oh, it's the amount of leaps. And if I want to do a simulation where the leap is six 20 times, I can then change it to six. Right? That's the idea with the variables so you can reuse it. Uh, but in, in, in this case, especially for leak code problems, variables are completely unnecessary. And it's part of why I'm having such a large amount of uh, space consumption compared to the others. The runtime's not going to be much worse when you declare variables. It's just it's just going to be the space because you're declaring a bunch of stuff that's getting stored. Uh, either way, it goes from one to the amount of leaps, and then if uh, if your current position plus i plus nums is greater than the furthest position, so this is an interesting check. All right, so if we go open up paint net again and let me go make another tab and also move it over because you don't have to see my code anymore right so he's basically because we knows he's going to reach the end no matter what what he's saying is like we got like you know two one one three or whatever two will bring me this far but because we know we can reach the end one of these will bring me further so he, he just checks which one of these brings me past where two itself would bring me? Uh, the, the first one that does that. So that, that's like a guarantee. It's guaranteed that something will do that because, yet again, in the description, it said that everything will reach the end. Uh, anyway, from there, he will set the next position to that and the furthest position to that as well. Uh, and then... At the end of that loop, he'll, he'll do that and return that. So that makes sense, right? So he basically checks, right? So if I do, I don't know, let's say we had two, 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 three. The way his logic would work here is he would set the furthest position to the second two right here. Then he checks this first thing and does i plus two in the same way that I did. And he finds it to be equal to three, right? So basically what he's doing, oh, I didn't have paint net open, but... I mean, you can kind of see what I was talking about, right? He, he wants it to go two way, uh, and then he checks these two variables, right? So it, we're, we we kind of ignore this problem, and we're doing two 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 three, like I was saying. He starts with a two. He checks two way. This is our current goal right here, right? This is what we have to get past. This is what we know we can get past. Uh, and it's kind of what I was doing in my code. If we if we look a little bit over here, right? Whenever we had our max leap. Uh, and we're comparing our max leap against our jump. And if it is the max leap, we set it equal to that. He's he's literally doing the same thing, except he's calling it farthest position, it, or which which yet again probably should be furthest position. But we're not really gonna. Yeah, you know, we're here to code. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so from there, right? He checks that. Does this leap of three get you further than the leap of two? And yes, it does. It brings you all the way out here. So now it moves the goal all the way out to here. And then he just checks the next variable, does two and two, so i plus two is now equal to four. Does four get you further than three? Yes, it does. That's our furthest thing. And he would keep doing that for the amount of leaps uh, with the amount of variables until he knows, obviously, let's say this four is the furthest, and he would pick that for the furthest position and go on from there.
Right, that makes sense. And he's he's actually skipping like a second step as well, I think. Because if we look here, he's just returning the position itself. He's not even returning, you know, make that leap and then uh Yeah, no, this is what he's returning. This is return to value where he's just setting the position equal to that. So what I was doing in my code is I was I would make this leap, but I would only store uh, the eye going that far away, I wouldn't do the max leap. And I think there's something... I feel like this is actually slightly wrong because of that. Like, I'm trying to think about how this would work correctly. Because what, what he's doing is like... He, like, what I was doing, if I had this 2, 2, 2, 3, I would reach the same conclusion about the furthest leap. And let's pretend it doesn't end. Let's pretend there is, you know, stuff after this 3. Uh, what he's doing here is he's going to this two, and then already just leaping two automatically, and he's storing this as his next position, and then he does his next loop with his next set of checks with whatever value is stored here. But that might not always be accurate. I mean, what if we have, like, you know, two, 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 three, like, seven, and then, like, a one, right? Because then what happens is he, he goes from this two, he rightfully finds out this two is the biggest leap, but then he wrongfully just leaps... I guess, well, you we wouldn't want 3-7. We'd want, like, 3-1. Right, so, it was, like, pretend this is just 2-2-2-3-1, two, 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 and this these scribbles don't exist. Right, so what he does is automatically leap 2 away here, which would give him a total of 3, because uh, you just have a 1 here. He could only go to this next value no matter what, versus if he had just, you know, checked again right here, which is necessary... Right. This is one of those optimizations that might have worked with the test case, but I don't think works otherwise. Because theoretically, I mean, if this was a zero, let's say that was a zero and it just ends right there. And let's just say this was like a seven or something, right? The three will bring you there. This one will not. Uh, and because of the way he's doing things, unless I'm missing something in his code, uh, he's, he's just skipping right, right past this three every time because he's just doing two cycles per check. Which is which is slightly inefficient. Uh, there's no comments on it, but I mean, if someone knows why this isn't the case, please comment below. But I, I do think this is one of those situations where this code happened to work for the test cases. But if it was tested against a larger set of things, like for example, this exact situation, right? If it was tested against two, 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 you know, three, one, zero, any number, it could be one even. Uh, his code would fail here. It would it would say it can't reach the end because he would do you would do two and two, and you go directly to here from the first loop, and then the second loop would try one and and fail. Unless I'm like misreading it, right? Because if if he does that, right, he would set his position to that that one there, and then he would do a loop for the amount of ones like like this wouldn't. This just would not work. It would have an infinite leap because he would never go anywhere. He would get a zero as his next thing and then try moving zero times every single time and then just be infinitely stuck here. So his code, outside of this one blemish, like where he's returning next position... Oh, no, no, he's not returning next... Okay. I misread the code and I've been explaining something that's just false. All right, his code actually does account for this. He does exactly what I do, right? When, when I go in my code and I have the current leap set to I, uh, because he doesn't have his current position available in this definition of, sorry, in this function, uh, he just does N plus I because that's the position that was passed in, right? And then he just, he just adds the I already instead of delaying it and putting it there because uh, it ends like a permanent value that's not going to be overwritten ever so he, he'll, he'll know that's always the position and then the i uh, is what you want to add anyway so he's doing exactly what i do where i do cur plus equals cur leap and then he's leaping to that too i just completely misread his code for some reason i missed this line like i might have read it out loud but mentally i didn't account for it so yeah his his thing this is basically this is what you'd want to do this exact solution this is my solution but with way less variables and none of these extra bullshit checks because he's accounting for what was given in the problem description and, and that's a good thing to do that's what you'd want uh in your solution 
Either way, I uh, hope you found this useful. Comment below if you're confused about anything. And uh, goodbye.